Welcome to the Guitarist Tone Lounge. I'm Neville Marcin. I'm Richard Barrett. And we have a special guest today, Paul Hyde-Marsh from Line 6. Um, we're going to essentially talk about some products that have been causing a bit of a stir in the market for some time now, the uh, Line 6 Helix. We've got a, a, my own stage Line 6 Helix here, because I've been using one for a while. And we've got the Line 6 Helix LT here, which is the slightly uh, stripped down version of the same thing. We're going to try some ideas and try to make some sounds, set some sounds up here, have a bit of playing. We've got some lovely Yamaha guitars here and uh, we'll just have some fun with it and uh, just hopefully entertain a bit and inform. Just to set the scene on this a little bit, as I mentioned, I've been using a Helix on stage for some time. Um, Richard, I, I play with Marty Wilde, the rock and roll singer. Richard plays with Tony Hadley um, from Spandau and uh, he's been playing, with, how long have you been playing with him? Right, a frightening amount of time actually since 2000, so 17, 17 years. Okay. And in that time, done quite a lot of session guys that I've met through Tony, other people from the 80s, you yeah. know, your Nick Kershaw's and Go West, that sort of thing. Nice. Okay. So, um, so uh, I mean, I, like you, are primarily, I've always been a valve amp guy. I use valve amps and pedals, it's, it's what I've done all my life. Um, and we went up to visit uh, Line 6 uh, a while back last year. And uh, Paul, in fact, gave a demo of the Helix. And I went up there with several of the guys from Guitarist and Total Guitar and Guitar Techniques. And we were not skeptical, that's not the right word, but we didn't really know what the answer was. We'd heard stuff and we'd had a tinker around with other um, profilers. Um, and we went up with, very open mindedly, but probably with a slight skepticism there. Um, and I came away converted. and. Uh, uh, I, I've used it live, we use in-ear monitors on, on stage, I don't need backline, and it's not just something that I use because I find it's convenient, I use it because I really honestly like it. Um, you haven't used anything like this live, have you Richard? No, um, I mean I've used Line 6 products, so my sort of gateway product was the pod, you know, the original pod, and they're great for recording, um, and for, for live, for some of these session gigs where I might need sounds on, as a one-off thing, then I've got an M9. So I'm, I'm familiar with some of the Line 6 products, but this is a step further because generally I'm using those things into a basement or what have you, and, I, and I've never played a gig without a valve amp, basically. Yeah. So this is going to be very interesting for me, and I'm afraid I'll be asking lots of uh, boring questions. Good. Okay, bring well, it on. So, Paul, I mean, you know, I, 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 I'm thinking of myself as the guy who knows that much about it. Richard probably knows that much about this particular product. You know everything about it. So, wh wh what's your experience of it, and how do you feel it's being received in the, in the market? Well, I mean, it's been obviously been received tremendously. I mean, every time I've done a demo, I mean, obviously, the, the trip to Yamaha was a, is a case in point. You know, it's yeah. it's it's not it, it wins people over very very quickly. I mean, just going back to something that Richard just said before, you know, the the pod, the original mm -hmm. pod. I mean, that's an old that's an old yeah, product. Now, right. when that came out, <laughs> that was a revolutionary product really because it meant that I could record guitar sounds at home and I didn't have to you know that at that point I was you know I was living at home I didn't have to keep my parents up through the night or anything like that you know it meant I could get good guitar sounds on the, on the recording but when you think about what your mobile phone I didn't do even have a mobile phone back back then I mean I didn't and uh, you know the, the technology then that the, the, your home computer that you had and obviously technology has become better and better and better it's become faster and faster so now what, what line six were able to do with the helix and there's been a succession obviously where they went from the original pod through pod hd and they're just able to capture more and more information from those amplifiers you know so you know in calabasas they have this this room f i mean everybody in line six loves vintage boutique gear as well so there's a room there full of vintage vintage gear that you would just you dream of um and they, 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 you know, they, they take it to bits and they, they analyze it. And now they're just able to get more and more information from that, which is, which is obviously where we are now with, with Helix and, and the Helix family. In know, terms so. of the way that they profile um, the, 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 the amps and the effects that are in these machines, how do they do it? Is, is it very different to the way that the other well-known 
people like fractal well, I could, and i can uh, tell you but i'd have to kill you okay. <laughs> <laughs> no i mean they've they got some really really clever guys there i mean they, they will they go to this 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 display room you know and they, they'll pull the arms out and we're at a stage now where instead of you know nobody just listens to a classic recording of an amplifier and and analyzes and tweaks something to make it sound like that classic recording they will actually take that amp to bits they'll measure individual components um, through that amp as well, and they'll, they'll basically make a little digital model of all the sections of the circuit board. So they may have a model of from the input jack, maybe to the first preamp tube, and you know that there'll be a little digital model of that. And the guys there will have that model, and, and I'm seeing them do it. It's fascinating. There's a there's a desktop there, and you see this model. You do something. Then they'll they'll me they'll measure the next part. You know, and if if there's a component or a section of the circuit board or an individual component that makes a big difference to the sound, they'll capture just that that particular component, so it's down to component level now. Mm -hmm. And you see this, you know, this computer that they, that they have there, and you will see like a daisy chain of all these little models talking to each other. So if this one does one particular thing, that will change further down the line at what this particular model does as well. So, so you just see all these, yeah. yeah, so you just, yeah, it's, it's very, yeah, all those little models are interactive. Before we carry on, can you very briefly give us an idea between the the the, main, the helix which is this one and my own one and the LT what's the what are the differences on them yeah so I mean helix L, sorry helix floor was the, like the first one we brought out the rack as well pretty much at the at the same time um, and then subsequently we've just brought a helix LT which is just a more streamlined version version of it so immediately you're going to notice there's no scribble strips yeah. on the, on each yeah. pedal so on helix floor you can you can customize all those scribble strips you can get them to say whatever you want yeah. you know you can customize the colors and all and all kinds of things there so it's a very i mean i, I can see what your setup is yeah. immediately i wouldn't know how to use you know to, yeah. to, to use that sound so it's, yeah. it's very very visual uh, helix lt it's you know, it, it's it's a it's a slightly more uh, sort of cost effective unit um um and it, it deals with that in a slightly different way, which we can, which, which, which we can go into as well. And then the other thing with Helix Floor and the, you know, the Helix Rack was there's a lot of I.O. on there, you know, so there's a lot of ins and outs, there's a lot of stuff going on around the back, because yeah. you can use it as a sound card, you know, use it as a computer interface, as a sound card, all, all kinds of different things. Um, a lot of people may not need those that extra I.O. Yeah. Yeah, um, there's a lot of the stuff on there that well, I, I generally don't need. On so. stage, I use two guitars. I use a, a Martin acoustic and a, a Fender Tele. And I'm actually plugged, this Yamaha acoustic is plugged into my acoustic patch on this Helix. And it really does sound e excellent. Um, yeah. I've had comments um, from people, guitarists in quite famous bands have come up and said, what's your acoustic sound? I said, it's a Helix. No, really? So, you know, it, they're impressive. They're, they're really impressive. I guess impressive. that figures actually, doesn't it? Because you're not going through the gubbins, the, the cab simulation or anything like that. You've no. effectively, it's like a very, very good DI box with some effects. I'm, and I'm going through a, it's a nice mic into a Valve Studio Valve preamp. That's right. that's that's what the, the patch is on here. With a bit of nice natural reverb and that's all. Yeah. And with all that I.O., that means, I don't know if you're running it that way, but you could have your acoustic coming out of its own output there it as is. well. So, so yeah, it's my set. acoustic comes out of one. Um, yes. Yeah, so I set XLR out and my electric comes out of the other. Yeah, so the guy and in the it's desk, a, yeah. yeah. It's really and cool. I mean, I think we talked earlier, one of the other big things about Helix was to, you know, it was, it was the real sound, it was the, the ease of use, and it was that I.O. and being able to control and work with other bits of gear that, yeah. you, that you have. And so we talked a little bit about being able to play together and, you know, with any of these Helixes here, because, I mean, going back, the differences between them, the similarities, they both sound exactly the same, the way the four signal paths work is the same. So I could plug this in and process this completely independently and send it out of an output, um, you know, with a whatever kind of model and effects I wanted. You could do the same with acoustic and send it out of a different output and you could plug a bass in or you could plug that in. So um, we could grab somebody else from the room and plug them in. And so four people could actually play wow. and process four different parts with that. You know, well, we've so got an acoustic powerful. here. We, we've got a lovely new Yamaha bass over there. We've got some electric. So later on, we'll actually have a bit of playing where I'll be strumming in G and the guys can uh, play, may, like may, may, maybe even A. Uh, and, <laughs> I uh, always like it when it's G. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. the and then we, then we can do it. So what, what, in, in a couple of seconds, we'll actually make some noise for you, okay? Right, we're gonna set Paul something of a challenge here because we're gonna get him to create from nowhere a couple of sounds. Um, Richard, what do you want first? Richard's gonna be doing the playing and Paul will be doing the tweaking. I would personally be very interested, and I hope some of the people watching would be interested in maybe a clean sound that perhaps will break up a little bit if you hit it hard. I'm thinking of my basement, and once I've got it on about four, you know, and and I can almost control it with how hard I'm picking. And 
just to see. Right. Okay. Yeah. So I mean, the the, the process is 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 super easy. Uh, it's the same on both units. So we're going to use this joystick here. Right. You can see this is the signal chip. So a guitar's coming in here, and you can see that currently we've got nothing in that signal right, path. Um, in that signal so path. Just direct. Yeah. Just direct. Yeah. So now I can use this joystick to move anywhere in the signal chip. So I'm going to go jump straight to the middle because we might want to put some different effects on. Right. Um, a po pre or post amplifier as well. And then you just press that joystick in. And you can see all the different types of effects here as I go as I go down here as well. So I'm going to scroll down and I'm just going to choose. So let's just choose an amp and a cab straight away. Now I can press that in. Got the options of guitar, bass amps there as well. There's a lot of bass models in there as well as guitar guitar right. amps. And as I scroll across there, I can actually go down through all of the different amp models in there. And there's currently like 62 different amps, 62 right. different amps in there. So yeah, we've got bassmans in there. We've got Fender Twins. We've got Deluxe. Um, you know, maybe, I mean, we could go for the basement. There's a, there's a twin there as well, if you want to. Do a basement, because that's what Richard's using at the moment. Okay, so let's go for, for this. We've got, and what Line 6 do a lot of is they'll, they'll, they'll model both channels as well, so both inputs. Oh, so yes, we, we, yeah. so, so we've got the normal input there, and we've got a bright input there as well. So, I don't know, let's go for let's go for normal. And if I press that in, and now we have, we've got, we've got that basement, and we've got instant access to all the amp controls there as well. Right. So the default is that they're on zero at the moment, is it? No, no. It'll it should it'll come up with with hopefully something that's that that'll oh, give a you a good start point. Yeah. So you don't have yeah. to jump straight straight in there. Yeah. But I mean, it's important to know in terms of ease of use. Those six pots are always going to change the six parameters on the screen. Right. The screen there. So whatever's there, I'm going to show you some nice stuff in a moment as well. Whatever's in there, you can instantly change that. And wherever you are, wherever you're on a patch, whatever's going, you can just press that amp icon there, and you've got your your amp around mm -hmm. there as well. And so we're, we're in there with a tweed, bit there, um, a tweed basement. And if we can see, look in here, we've got three diff six different parameters there, six different pots, three different pages. And as I move across there, we'll see all the different parameters that I want to, to have. So it's going to default to the, the cabinet that comes with the amp. So it's gone straight to a 410, yeah. But we could mix and match that as well. So we could have a couple of 412s on there. We could mix and match it with you know, different different combos, just speaker configurations and yeah. things as well, yeah. So that should be, I mean, that's, the, that's, that's straight, to straight, that straight to the answer. Obviously, this is not from my solo album or anything. I'm trying to <laughs> test the dynamic, the dynamic response. You can't really communicate how it feels, but... <laughs> So we've got the drive, there's the drive there, so if I back that off, uh, we've got the channel volume over here, we've got master, we've got diff various different amp, um, power amp parameters as well, so the things like right. the sag and the bias, you can actually change that mm -hmm. on the different amps as well. One of the things that I've learned on my, especially the clean sounds, is that any of the amps, I tend to put the master on 10, and I tend to find it's, it, it, you get the bloom, you get the much more of the character of the amp that way. That's what I've, I've found. Yeah. And Jason, actually, Jason Sidwell, who works, well, he's a music, music editor on all of our guitar titles, he's done exactly the same. And uh, we both think, think it sounds mm -hmm. better. Yeah, and you'll find that if you've got the master up there, because the master is, it, it, it is like the, like the amp being on full. Yeah. So, so all those yeah. power amp parameters, the, the sag and the bias, and that makes a yeah. bigger difference when, yeah, the actual amps, when, the, when the actual amp model's on full there, yeah. Yeah, so got amp model, amp model there. Um, obviously, I'll press that in again, and I can go through all the different ones again. So I mean, let's maybe like try that twin for a bit of a cleaner, a cleaner sound there. So if we go for, okay, so that's a should be twin sounds, and again, just default into its own sort of two twelve cabinet. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it feels completely different as well, more like a twin. And that's obviously absolutely bone dry. There's nothing there apart from a cabinet model and, a, and yep. a, an amp model there. Cool. Mm -hmm. yeah. So we could take that, or we could we could mix and match some different cabinets with that if we wanted to, or we could add different effects. What do you What do you guys want to? Why wanna, don't wanna we? Go? Why don't we? Because people who know a twin or know a bass man will probably have a vague idea about what it sounds like. Why don't we leave it at what it naturally is and add some stuff to it? Maybe add some echo to it. Maybe stick a pedal in, a distortion yeah, pedal in front of it or something. Something. 
Yeah, yeah. A drive, a yeah. natural drive. Yeah. Okay. So, so we've, cho we've chosen the amp here. So, let's before we do that, do you want a little bit of reverb or a little bit of delay or anything on that, or do you just want to jump straight? Yeah. Actually, a little bit of reverb, I think. Yeah. Would be, would be lovely. Thank you. Let's do it. <laughs> so I'm going to move the joystick across, and I'm just basically pushing the joystick towards you there. Um, yeah. She's doing so now. Again, it's the same process for us putting anything in there. So if I scroll down now, I've got reverbs, and I've got all the different reverbs there. As and well, these so. come out with a with a sort of representative setting um, in in the way that some of the older Line Six things like the M9 or something where you can just select an effect and you're sort of up and running with a yeah, yeah. a yeah. sensible yeah. preset. Absolutely, yeah. It. It, it, yeah. Won't, it won't go straight to that sound with a zero. You, you don't have to yes. straight, you know, jump you know zero for anything. You, you're going to be up and running pr pretty quick there. So I mean, we could have a whole I mean, a whole collection of different reverbs there. Do you want just a room reverb? Do you think? Yeah, we're in a room, let's just do a room. Yeah. So I'm going to press that in now. And you can see, just like I said before, I have all the different parameters there for the reverb there as well. And there's two pages, so see the two little dots there. If I scroll along there, oh, yeah. I've okay, got all the different parameters there. Page. Yeah, okay. Um, what you can also do with Helix is you can actually put the, um, use it almost like you would use a reverb or a delay in a, in a door. So you could actually have it so that it's, rather than the whole amp sound go to the reverb, you could actually run it almost in parallel. So if I pick that reverb up there, so if I press action, move that down, you can see it's actually put it on a parallel, parallel okay. path there. Mm. Um, so now we've got the twin, and you can do all kinds of really creative and complex things with that, depending on where you want to split the sound. You know, I mean, we could split it before the amp, post the amp. We could even split it with a crossover as well, you know, and just send some, you know, the bottom frequencies to one amplifier and the high yeah. end to, a, to its completely different amplifier. Um, yeah, and then merge them back in there. So we've got a reverb there. And then if we go back to the front of the amp, and you can see, I mean, I'm not scrolling through pages here, I'm just using the joystick. Um, so, I mean, are you cool with the reverb parameters on that? Yes, I like that. Yeah, okay. So, again, I mean, again, same, same process. I'm going to press that in, and I'm going to choose some of the distortion parameters, or the distortion pedals, across. And now, I'm before the amp there, so there's no point in having a stereo. Right, yeah, yeah, could, there is stereo overdrives if you put them somewhere else on the chain, but it'll actually collapse that stereo effect into a mono to, yeah. to, because we're in front of the amp. So I'm just going to use the mono of this. I'd away. always put it in front of the amp anyway. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yep, yeah, yep. Yeah. Um, so yeah, so there's there's clones in there. There's all kinds of different things there. So you do have a particular overdrive sure, that you like? Yeah, I'm not used to this much choice, really. <laughs> um, so something that's a little bit like I've, I've got a super overdrive actually that I've been using as a little booster. Okay, so, so anything that, like that or a clone. So that so we literally just put a super overdrive in there um, right. or with the <laughs> with the new the new updates. Line six are, uh, are regularly updating Helix. So when we started we you know it was 45 amps with the 62 now the effects then and, and these have all been free updates so we does more and more effects there. So in the last uh, 2.2 I think we've got the we've got that overdrive pedal which we put in there just for you. Great. Yeah. <laughs> great. I mean, I'm a bit ham fisted. <laughs> But, Sounds uh, great, man. Sounds great. Yeah, I mean, that's been you know, the Super Overdrive is a favourite of mine. That's very like playing through one. Yeah, cool. So, I mean, so now we've got that, you can see that that's sitting in front of the amp. So, if I take the joystick up there and we move it along, we can bypass that and you could choose a, a different overdrive if you want. You'd have multiple. You're not really limited to how many. I mean, if you wanted to, you could actually have 32 effects on at once with this. There's a massive amount of things that you can do there. So you're not limited like in the old days where you chose one type of delay and like one type of overdrive. You could have. You could choose eight different overdrives if you wanted there. You know, and maybe oh, maybe a noise gate at the end. To, 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 <laughs> absolutely. Um, I mean, anything else you want there? The chorus is a delay that could be pre, post amp, anything. A little, um, what about a little bit of delay? Yeah. Uh, is there a feature on here to do a modulated delay? Mm -hmm. Yeah, all kinds of different delays. Can we delays, try a bit yeah. of that? That's a favorite yeah. of mine. Yeah, so I'm going to put a post amp. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, yeah, this is the great thing amp. about this, because you set up your signal path, and you can visually see where yeah. where the, the unit is in the path. So you put your distortion in front of your amp, you put your delay yeah. behind it, and you could choose where, whether a wah wah is in front of your uh, compression or the whatever, can't pretty much anything, anything yeah, you want yeah. to do, yeah. And it's and the visual side of it as well is obviously it's all color coded. 
You know, so the, so anything that's like the, the the dark orange is going to be reverb. The overdrive you see there is kind of is, 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 is yellow. The amp's going to be red. As soon as I put a, a delay on there, I know it's going to be green. Oh, as well. so, so this is like the so a, um, the stomp box effects were. That, well, if you've that got the, if you've yeah. got MCU's effect, yeah, it's, it's, it's both, all yeah. it's yes, mm. it's all taken. It's, it's taken it from there. Yeah. So uh, we're going to put a post amp. I'll maybe put it alongside the reverb there. So I'll put it in that sort of parallel path. And I'll stick it before there. So again, same process. So it lit, you, you really just don't even need to read the manual almost on this, you know? It's Excellent. like, you press that. <laughs> yeah, that's a, that wins everybody over that. So, <laughs> so I'm gonna scroll down, I'm gonna choose a delay. And this time, instead of it being mono, we're post amp, so I'm gonna go for stereo. Lovely. So what, what did, kind of delay did we say? Well, modulated kind of, you know, I yeah, mean, the I'm, analog with one mod was one of my favorites on the other, the stomp boxes. Right, um, I mean, I've got, I've got the old, Pocket brigade things there. The um, you know we've got the, we've got tape. We've got tape echoes. Um, I've got a modulation with delay and chorus there. So let's let's add let's add that and see what that sounds like. And obviously because we're in stereo, you you're hearing this wonderful this wonderful stereo sound. Cool. Top tempo. Obviously, top tempo there, like you'd expect. Oh, yeah, I hear that. Um. Yeah. And then, all, again, all your parameters are there straight away for you to just jump in there and, and tweak any of those parameters that you see there. Right. So if there's anything you want to do. Oh, I see. Oh, yes, yes, yeah. indeed. So on the, there's a second page there, I've learned yeah. already. Yeah. So is that where you'd control the mod itself? Yeah. yeah. I can yeah. see that. So currently on chorus, we've got vibrato the there as well, or off. Yeah, cool. Currently it's on 583, uh, 538, sorry, milliseconds there. If I actually press that in, I can actually change it to different values as well. So, so now it's on quarter notes, and now the tap tempo is going to work as well. Right. So any kind of time-based effect, you can start tap tempo in those. Um, okay. Without wanting to sound too precise about it, but 400 milliseconds I think we've got. About five or six repeats and a bit of modulation, basically to try and make me sound as much like Eric Johnson <laughs> as possible. Yeah, and I'll so, do the rest. Yeah, so that's all. That's <laughs> all the parameters you you have there. Obviously, like you said, like you correctly pointed out, you've got your two pages there. Yep. Um, so I've got feedback, I've got low cut, I've got high cut, I've got the mix there, um, and all your sort of your, your that's modulation nice parameters. Actually having as well. those, so, the low cut and the high cut on there as well. Yeah, yeah. And a lot of it just represents what you'd get on an original pedal. If it's a, if it's a model of an original sort of classic pedal, it would have, this, like the Stuba Overdrive did, it would yes, be the same yeah. parameters that you'd be familiar with from your, from, from your right. Overdrive pedal, yeah? So yeah, so we've, we've still got that. I mean, we maybe want to add some, so we want to add some modulation things. <coughs> sure, that, yeah, yeah, that's yeah. Um, so good to hear that. Again, you've got a choice pre or post amp, and again, it's the same, it's just this joystick. So if I was to maybe add a chorus, and let's just put it, for the sake of it, put it after the, the amp, yeah? Yeah. Is that, is that okay? So if I press that in there, scroll down, modulation, or post amp, so I'm gonna go stereo, and then I can scroll down, and maybe choose a classic sort of 70s chorus. Lovely. Wow. Okay, yeah, that's chorusy, all right. Yeah. <laughs> so it reminds me a bit of an old C1 that I had. It reminds me of a maestro one I had, remember the Big one with that oh, big yeah. rotary, <laughs> and one was balls, I think it was called. Yeah. So you've got any kind of modulation that you want there. If we left that on. Oh, right, is it okay if we lose a tiny bit of depth? Yeah, absolutely, yeah. Yeah, so let's. in the mix control yeah. on the chorus, yeah. yeah. Yeah, that's nice. So we've got some of the, the dry sound, some of the chorus sound. Cool. Yeah, so we're very quickly, we've chosen an amplifier, we've chosen, there's a, there's a delay there, the reverb, uh, we've chosen the overdrive pedal, there's a modulation there as well, so. One of the things that really interests me about this way of working with it, so if I were to decide that I was going to stop using the basement. Um, 
and take one of these out so I could configure the amp. Obviously I could change that. I understand about the presets concept, but within this preset, so I've got a rig here, a virtual rig. Mm -hmm. So can these effects be like the stomp boxes in front of the amp yeah. in a foot switching? Absolutely, yes. So currently you can see that we actually have nothing assigned to any of the pedals. Right. So if I want to assign, so if you want to, if you want it to be laid out like your M series pet, yeah, yeah. Up, mm. or just line, lined up like a like a, a, a pedal board, you know, like a, yes. like a traditional sort of pedal board, um, we just want to assign these effects to these these pedals. Yeah. So if I want to assign, I'm going to pick randomly any of the foot switches here. So if I want to assign this modulation say to here. Okay. If I just, so I'm not going to, I'm not going to press in and activate the foot switch. I'm just going to touch it there for three seconds. Press OK. Now that is an on-off <laughs> for your chorus there, right. okay? <laughs> so now it's... And you touch the switch for a couple of seconds. Yeah, so now it's, that's assigned. I'm gonna move the joystick down and let's just move through these. So I'm gonna okay. maybe assign, again, anywhere I want to there, but reverb, so say learn control, I'm gonna click okay. There's your, there's your reverb pedal now. Okay. Same thing again, so there's a sign. Assign that delay to there. So again, just touch it there for, and then maybe that overdrive that we had first of all. Mm. Oh yes. Yeah. yeah. So now you've got a pedal board, your delay pedal, your chorus, your reverb, and your overdrive pedal there. Okay. And um, when obviously there are displays on there and the color coding as well. Are the color coding uh, around the foot switches? Is, does that dim slightly when they're bypassed? Yeah. Yeah, so you've sort of got that double thing. I'm just thinking of my eyes. Yeah, absolutely. But if you're if you're on Helix LT without the scribble strips, if you see a blue foot switch that's dim, you know that it's it's some kind of modulation you know it's effect. Your mod, but it's not on. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. So as soon as I switch in that, you can see it's. Like a, it's yeah. Yeah, yeah. So there we go. We're all completely. You know, and there's not. You, there's like it's the, one of the great things about this. Is you don't really need to to read the manual. You'll get more if you do read the manual, but very quickly. Yeah. You're up and running, you know. I haven't, with, I haven't read my manual. I mean, I've always yeah. personally played with it until I've got something happening, and then I outgrow yeah. that and get the manual out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's <laughs> a, me, me too. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. So yeah, so there's a, there's a pedal board there straight away. Uh, we've added, the, you know, the, the amps on there, so you you know, you just tap that. So the the other great thing about the capacitance foot switches is, like we, we said earlier, in this screen here, that's your overdrive parameters, so I can very quickly change any of those parameters there. As if the pedals were on the board in front of you. Yeah. But now that I've actually assigned the foot switches, if I want to change the reverb, I don't have to move the joystick so it highlights the reverb. I can just touch that reverb foot switch and there's the reverb parameters. If I want to edit the delay parameters, I just touch the delay foot switch, there's the delay parameters. So I can very quickly move through anything there. So it's actually quicker so obviously than obviously like, like a smartphone screen or something, you touch it with your finger, but you don't have to worry about the sole of your shoe accidentally activating a parameter, presumably. Yeah, if you played barefoot, Oh, that right. would actually switch. Almost that's, never. <laughs> yeah, that never. would. That would. But all it's going to do really is just bring up the parameters on the screen here. So even so though even though I touch that, I'm not. I haven't anyway. changed anything. All I've done is just brought up what's what's weight. What those six sort of knobs there are actually okay. waiting, to, waiting to change. Okay. Can we just go through this patch that we set up, hmm? playing a few bits and pieces, turning some of the effects on and off, and just seeing how it works. Right, that, I'll try then and maybe something we set appropriate up a, for each. Then maybe set up a dedicated lead sound, like a real, yeah, yeah, I'd like to hear that. something mm. with, you know, nice reverb, nice echo. Mm. Okay, well, let's, let's have a try this right, now. what have we got? So um, we've got do you want to do that delay, on and off? Should we start with I'll nothing? I'll let you do that if you want. Okay, that's on. Should be playing something by Rush really at this point. <laughs> <laughs> and 
I saw that you dived in and changed the level a bit there because you set the overdrive yeah, a little bit hot. So yeah, I think I did that before when I was when I was was tuning. So yes, I do. But I was just thinking that's that's quite handy because that's the sort of thing that I often want to do. Think, oh, that's a bit that's a bit hot. I need to reach down and just tweak that level. Yeah, I mean, there's things that you could gain from sort of reading the manuals. Obviously, we've 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 grabbed all of that stuff there. There's so many different options of, of, of doing that. So. What you could do with this is you could change that without actually even having to reach down and do that. There's a pedal edit mode okay. where you can actually go in and you can change all the parameters um, very, very quickly on that as well. So, so let's say you are doing that live and you just didn't have time to reach, to reach mm. down. If I press and hold that, it's now asking what we want to edit. Okay. So you're, you know, you're playing away and you want to change the, the, the drive on that stupid control or the, or the actual level. I'm going to press that. It's now going to spill out the parameters there. Mm -hmm. That's the level there, that's the one we want to change. So again, you're playing away, you press that, and now the expression pedal will actually change the level as well. Right, right. So, so by going a bit deeper, you're actually able now, instead of switching that pedal on and having to reach over quickly to do it, you mm. could actually do it with your, you know, you could actually do it with the pedal there as, as well. Yeah, I can see, yeah, absolutely, yeah. There's some, some Wow, it's amazing. Uh, some amazing things on there. That's, that okay. Is, let's yeah. let's set up a really great classic, kind of rock to a little bit more. Yeah, yeah, of, real saturated. Yeah, the, the, your, your foot on the monitor lead. solo. Yeah, kind of sound. Let's try the Soldano then, yeah. um, if that's okay. Okay. Yeah. So let's so let's just do this in a slightly different way this time. So rather than have it default immediately to a cab that line six have chosen. Yeah. Let's say, and I'm gonna choose the cab first so that we don't end up with an unspeaker simulated uh, amp model. So yeah, 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 I'm gonna press that in, I'm gonna scroll down, and I'm gonna choose just the cabinet models, and I'm gonna choose two cabinets, and now I can choose, drop a couple of 412s straight into the signal path there. Uh, two pages there, so I'm gonna go through and add another. So right now we've just got two Two four twelves, right? In the thing there, yeah. So we've chosen two cabinets there. Now, same process as before. Scroll down. Let's grab an amp, all the way through those sixty-two different amp models. And we should have a Soldano on a bunch of different channels. Then there's three, three channels on the on the Soldano. So a solo leads one hundred. Great. So I'm gonna press that in. Your amp controls are straight there as well. And do you want a little? Okay. Do you want to jump in with a little bit of delay, delay or reverb straight away or? Yeah, let's. Should we go yeah. for a bit of reverb straight, straight off? Yeah. Can we just hear this sound first? Hear what sound we got? Or yeah, yeah. Sure. Absolutely. Here we go. Absolutely. Yeah. Very yeah. nice. Yeah. Very nice. Certainly yeah. Gary Moore 1989, as far as I can yes, hear. Yes, yeah. 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 So, yeah, we said some delay. Let's, again, it's all the same. Stereo delay. And do you want a modulation of the chorus one, or should we try something? I think probably not modulated in this case. Yeah, yeah a little bit a more straight up. Mm -hmm. a rocking lead mm. sound, aren't we? Maybe uh, quite a short delay as well, you know, 175-ish. Mm -hmm. Yeah, 175 there. <laughs> Just fun hitting a chord yeah. and hearing the, yeah. the repeats. It reminds me of hearing Gary Moore at Reading or something. Nice thud on that, actually. I found myself quite enjoying that. And yeah. Playing it longer than was musically necessary. Yeah. But, um, yeah. Right.
Paul has set up an acoustic patch for me. We won't go through the rigmarole of showing you what we've done, but what have you done? What, what have I got there? Yeah, so basically we left Richard with exactly the same Soldano sound that you had before. Right. Yeah. Um, we then opened up the, the, the path two, and we've added it so that that's, that's listening to the auxiliary input, um, yeah. and your acoustic guitar is plugged in the auxiliary, so you're actually both completely separate. So you've got your own reverb and compressor on there, yeah. and you've got the same sound as, we had, right. as you had before with the Soldano. Okay. Right. We're just gonna play a couple of chords, and Richard's gonna do some very pretty noodling, I think. Try. Yeah. <laughs> Right, we just had a little bit of a jam over a couple of chords with just myself on acoustic and Richard. We've now changed guitars here. Um, incidentally, if you're interested, we were using the, the cheaper, so the, like an under a thousand pound A-series acoustic and Revstar. We've gone to the Japanese ones. These are both over, over the ground, about 1200 quid. This is the A5, that's a P20. Yes. Um, very nice guitar. And what do you got there? Got the, B, the new BB bass. This is the P34 Japanese. Okay. BB bass, yeah. Very nice. Yeah. We're just going to play a similar couple of chords thing because we don't want to get too complicated. And, yeah. uh, and uh, incidentally, yeah, uh, yeah, sorry, yeah, yeah, I was just going to say, obviously, we've added another path there as well. Yeah. So, so we're on exactly the same preset as we had before. So Richard still got the sold on, and you still got the acoustic, and then we've opened up another path on Helix. So we're three paths now, and I've got the bass plugged into that through a Galleon Kruger. I think three paths through one Helix, which is. Uh, Amazing, really. Yeah. Okay. And if anybody wants to sing, we could also plug a microphone in the Helix Floor as well. So we could <coughs> and <then laughs> while we're doing this. We could process yeah. that separately as well. So it could be four, four parts. Okay. All right, here we go. Okay. So Paul, yes. we're going to start wrapping things up now a bit, but you must get asked, I mean there are lots of challenging questions that people ask a um, piece of equipment like this because clearly a lot of people will have preconceptions about it and some of those will be negative, won't they? So what, how do you feel about it and what do you say to people? Uh, well, I mean, obviously, I'm incredibly biased. <laughs> yeah. uh, however, for, just from from personal experience of just being in shops and getting people to plug in and get, I mean, we saw it. We've seen it here today, you know. Like, and I've, I saw it with you when we we're in Milton Keynes as well. You know, you get people to plug in and you get them to to try it, and then and, and that inevitably going to be won over by it as well, you know. And what I was saying at the beginning, and just about modeling technology and just the, the amount of processing power that's available to us now, not only to capture the data but also then package it up in a nice box and actually have it as, a, as something that people can buy. Yeah. Um, th that's very, very different from what it used to be years ago when people maybe have this perception of how digital was, you know, back in its, in its infancy, mm -hmm. you know, it's very, it's a very, very different thing now. So, so yeah, I mean, you just, you got to just try it, you know, I think, and, yeah. you know, inevitably I'm sure you'll be won over by, by, you know. Yeah. So, but people say, oh, it's not the same. It, c it can't be the same. It can't feel the same. It can't have the touch response. It can't have the dynamics. You turn things down. It doesn't react like a guitar amp and pedals. Well, I mean, I would definitely say that it does. You know, it, it really does. And, 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 and then add to, to that all of the extra stuff that you get with this, you know, the fact that you can go out without having to carry, 
you know, a four by 12 and an amp head that's maybe unreliable, you know, and, and, it's, and it's loud and, and maybe the people in the front of the, uh, you know, on the size of the gigs that I play, I've it's such a small venue. I've with that, yeah, the directional thing yeah. and where I Absolutely, have to stand yeah. on the stage, I can't hear it. But yeah, but people the, 30 feet away are saying, oh, it's nailing me. Yeah. Tuck the words yeah. right out of your mouth, yeah. Yeah, yeah. So, so what you've got here is you've got a nicely packaged box full of different amps and different sounds that sound great to the audience. Mm. They come through the PA like a real, like a real mic'd up amp, you know, and this, this, the size of the gigs that I play, the, you know, the sound engineer hasn't got time to, to be messing with an, a, a microphone for, for ages and ages. This comes out of the box sounding like a well mic'd up, yeah. a well mic'd up amp and, and then all the effects as well. So yeah. people really just have to try it and, and try and get away from what that, the original, the original idea of what digital was when digital was, you know, wasn't on your phone, it was basic on, on your computer, your home computer, yeah. it was basic, you know, and, and it was basic in multi effects. And now it's not, you know, now it's a, yeah. it's a different, different beast all again. All right, then the other side of it, Richard, you honestly had never ever plugged into one of these no, prior to today. No. I knew so, about them and I was interested. But so, what's I, your, I, what's I, your thoughts? I'd probably fall into that category in the sense that, I mean, yeah, it can't be that simple, can it? But I guess decades of work has gone into it at this point and certainly um, when we had a little play just then we were making it up as we went along we didn't rehearse anything and I found that improvising on the fly under pressure it responded great I, I particularly like the frequency response at the lower and upper extremes as a uh, first generation pod user it was great I mean an amazing unit and I'm Still like it. I won't ever get rid of it, but um, I, I know its limitations and I know how to work around them. But with something like this, certainly the, the high end, the way that speaker simulation is working on that is allowing for a much more natural sounding high end that fools me into thinking that I'm playing through an amp more. I'm not changing my playing to suit it. Uh, so, uh, I, I, yeah, I don't. It's really, really good. I like it a lot. I can see using something like this. Yeah. I mean, and the other side of that is that you don't have to be completely, you don't have to just go, I'm, I'm finished with analog and I'm finished with valve, I'm just going digital. I mean, you can do, it makes life a lot easier if you do, but people still like analog pedals, they still like buying nice gear and, you know, like nice bits and pieces. And you yeah. can, this works with all that That'll as well. Play nice exactly. So you, you know, those, those patches that we put in before, we didn't need to add the Soldano to that. We could have just left it with all of your favorite pedals and laid them out on the floor, just like a stomp, you know, mm -hmm. just like a custom mm -hmm. pedal board. Um, but you know, multiple custom pedal boards because there's so many different. Well, I have to say, as the, the, I said to you at the time, the super overdrive is what I'm using as a boost. And so you said, oh, well, we've got that. And mm -hmm. it felt like I was playing through the super overdrive. Mm -hmm. I mean, in the same way, I mean, I use some of the line six effects. I've got an M9 actually on one of my boards. And I think it's a really handy unit, actually, though I still use a bunch of analog pedals and, and other standalone yeah. pedals as well. So yeah. I can certainly envisage a future with, with something like this yeah. figures in it. I mean, and, you know, with, with all the ins and outs on this, it's set up to, to run four cable method with a, you know, with a traditional amplifier as well as running, you know, analog pedals alongside that as well. Yeah. And, you know, it, it, and it really it can in, involve itself in any kind of setup that you was want. was missing yeah. from multi-effects boards for so many years. It was guitar in and stereo out and you'd think, well, what yeah. if I want to use the drives in yeah. front of the amp and the effects in the loop? Yeah, it was, so it was nice to be able to do that. Absolutely. And, you know, these are both going to do that, you, you know. Just by way of comparison, and to prove there's no sound difference at all, because the, the um, models' profiles in this are identical to the main Helix floor board. Um, we've programmed more or less the same sounds, did it quickly because we're running out of time. But we programmed more or less the same sounds into the LT as we had before. Paul's changed bass, what have you got there, Paul? I have one of the new BB basses, so it's a BB434. Yeah, yep. lovely bass. I've had one of these for, for about a month now. I've been lucky enough to have to have this one. So yeah, it's great. We'll be out in the shop soon. Um, I'll need go pickups on there. Um, just plays nice and sounds. Yeah. Plays nice, sounds great. Maple and mahogany on the body there. Brilliant. And on the mm. next there, sorry, as well. Fantastic. Richard, yeah. you've still got the Revstar Yes, I, know. I need to remind myself here. Is the P20? P20 yes. Yeah. yeah, Japanese made. Good. Oh, yeah. Um, yeah. I've got the Japanese made um, A5R. Very nice guitar too. So we're just going to play a couple of chords and uh, Richard can do some lovely playing. Paul can do some lovely bass playing. Thank you, Paul, for coming down. No problem. It's been a pleasure. It's been, it's been, been a, a pleasure for us as well. Thank yes. you very yeah, much. Yeah, I enjoyed it. Cheers. Okay, here we go. Mm -hmm. 